In this video, I want to look at how u substitutions work around log functions. Um, again, like the exponential one, it's hard to see the inside, or it's hard to get used to looking for it. Maybe it's not hard, it's just that it's different than looking at other functions that definitely have sine of and a bunch of stuff in parentheses, or cosine of a bunch of stuff in parentheses. Right? This, you're not going to see it that way. So, recall, back from Calc 1. Uh, taking a derivative. If I had a function like this, the log of something, right? I know that the derivative of the log x is 1 over x. So the derivative of the log of something else is 1 over that something else, and then the chain rule kicks in that says times the derivative of what's inside. So the derivative of this thing would be 1 over this thing times the derivative of this thing. Well, the derivative of x squared plus 3x is 2x plus 3. And so when you take this fraction and multiply it by that, this just ends up in the numerator. Um, and so the derivative actually is kind of nice. The derivative of the log of a function, you just put the function down on the bottom and then you put its derivative up on top. Um, and that's really a quick way to be taking derivatives. You may recall we did logarithmic differentiation back in Calc 1. And we broke things up because then it was easy to take the derivative of a log. Rather than products and quotients, we broke them into sums and differences of logs, and then it was easy to take the derivative of those logs. You just put the function at the bottom, take the derivative, and put it in the top, and move on. It's really quick. Um, now, what we need to do is we need to take this process and go backwards. We need to integrate. We need to be able to look at something like this and say, oh yeah, it came from there, right? We need to do the antiderivative. So, uh, so, for instance, this one, looking at that, this is, again, is not like the u substitutions we did in the last section where you can clearly see the name of a function and stuff inside the parentheses, right? That stuff inside the parentheses was the u. Um, I don't see that here. But knowing that the way logs work, if they stick a function in the derivative, say in the denominator, then maybe I should think that way sometimes when I see a fraction like this. And in, in this case, of course, it works because I'm just doing this one backwards. But if I let u be that denominator, then du would be the derivative of that, which would be 2x plus 3 times dx, which that's what I have. I've got the 2x plus 3 times dx there, so that just all turns into a 1 du, and then the denominator is just u. And now I've got the integral of 1 over u du, which is the log of the absolute value of u, which, plugging back the u in, is the log of the absolute value of x squared plus 3x plus 1. Plus a constant. Okay. Um, yeah. Let's try another one. Okay. Uh, let's do this one where I've got the integral of 1 over 3x plus 4. Again, this isn't necessarily one you'd recognize as, hey, there's stuff inside parentheses. I better do a u substitution. But there's stuff in the denominator. And this is one thing to take a look at. Does this work? And in this case, it does, because with the denominator equaling u, 3x plus 4, then du is 3x dx. Well, I don't have the 3, but I've got the dx. So dx is going to turn into du divided by 3. There's the du, there's the 1 third. And then what's left here is 1 over u. So that stuff right there is the 1 over u. The 1 third comes out, and the integral of 1 over u is the natural log of the absolute value of u. Integral of 1 over u du, I should say, is the natural log of the absolute value of u, plus a constant. Plugging back in for the u, I get this. Okay. Now, some things to be careful of, some mistakes I see all the time, right? I don't, I don't want to see them anymore. Uh, something like um, the integral of 1 over x cubed dx. People get so used to, oh, I got that thing in the denominator, it's the natural log of that when I do the integral. It's like, no, because with this in the denominator, you would have to say, hey, I need u equals x cubed, so du would be 3x squared. Well, I don't have the, the x squared. The 3, the constant is fine. You can monkey with the constant like we've done many times before. But you don't have that x squared there. Uh, and I can't just multiply by x squared on the inside and 1 over x squared on the outside. It just doesn't work that way. This is not set up. This is, this is not a log of x cubed, right? You don't get log of x cubed on this. What you do get is that this is an x to the negative 3 power, and the power rule applies here. So this integrates to x to the negative 2 divided by negative 2, 
So there's the negative 2 on the bottom, and the x to the negative 2 puts the x squared down there as well. So this is not a log. This is a power rule with a, a negative exponent. The thing is, the power rule works for all exponents except negative 1. And when the exponent is negative 1, that's when you get a log, right? So, so yeah, like, like this one right here, it's 1 over x squared plus 1. I mean, that's not, that's not a log, right? Because if you did 1 over u, that x squared plus 1, the du would be 2x dx. And again, I don't worry about the 2, but I don't have the x dx. I have a 1 dx. I don't have the x up there. It's not a log of x squared plus 1. It's It happens to be the derivative of 1 over x. You know, this, this function right here is the derivative of arctan. So it integrates to arctan x plus a constant. On the other hand, if you do have the x up in the numerator there, then a u substitution does apply. u equals that denominator, du is 2x dx, I've got the x dx, I'm just missing the 2, so hence the half shows up out here, and then the x dx is the du over 2, and then you just got 1 over u, which integrates the log of that, and I write it like this. Notice I didn't use absolute values here, I just put parentheses, because I know that x squared plus 1 is never negative, and so I don't have to worry about absolute value on that. Um, Anyway, u substitutions with natural logs are, again, they're not hard. They just, you got to get used to looking for that, hey, the denominator, if I take the derivative of the denominator, it's there in the numerator, or mostly there. If you're just missing, you're just missing that plus a constant, no big deal. Um, but you got to have everything else. If, you, if you're letting u be the denominator, then you've got to essentially have its derivative in the numerator. And then you can do that u-substitution, and you'll end up with a log of the denominator. Okay. There you go. U-substitutions with logs.